fucking uh, uh, Right. Okay, guys. So we're late. Uh, we had problems on the bus. Do you want to move in a bit? Uh -huh. <laughs> this is Mark. Mark came all the way from Newcastle. You guys might know him from previous videos. But we filmed some Queen stuff quite a while back. And with it being Freddie's uh, Freddie's day today, we thought I'll be wearing our Queen T-shirts, and we're here for you guys today. Devin's spawned back all day. Might be some of you anyway. So welcome guys to Queensville. It's great to have Mark here finally after so long. <laughs> it's a long time. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a long, long time. About we have years. got your questions, guys, as well. Uh, so today, this is a very special one because we thought today we were going to do today this that we promised to do, which is demos and outtakes and pieces as well this mm -hmm. so this is a thing we we'll, want you to do for a while so um you've got questions guys we've got questions we've got a shitload of stuff and we're here for you so if you want to get your questions in now guys please do get them in we'll be here for an hour and a half uh because we're going to be here i can't understand what people are saying because <laughs> it's all spanish but we're going to crack on anyway with this thing so the main reason for this mark was Mm -hmm. to do. Wait, do you, you want to explain what, what this was all about? Because this is something you had in mind, didn't you? Yep, uh, the Complete Works book, which came out in 2004, I believe. Yes. Uh, sorry, yeah, 2014. Right. Sorry. Yes. Right. 2014. This is the original edition. There is a new print of this, which has now been updated since the uh, Freddie Mercury movie. Yes. Uh, which came out, obviously, late this, well, a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, so there's a new edition of this with more... Yes information in that Fabulous. but this is the 2014 edition which will have most of the demos from the 80s 70s and 90s and so on and yeah. so on and so, so on, on. Yeah. Right. and as you all know there is the the queen box set is due to come out next year if it ever comes out because it's taking these to sort of that fucking box set series with brian may's box sets coming out next mm. year yeah. finally hopefully well we finally we sorted out that as well guys yeah sorry about we're late we had we were, traffic was crazy so we're here for an hour and a half now for you guys so get your questions in as many questions as possible to ask mark because this is mark's day today and i will be also telling you about most of the stuff on queen's Vault later in the shop but let's crack on anyway now he sent me i get a pad um my Oh, oh, I'll have to cut my glasses for this. <laughs> oh, okay. It's the only way I can see. He said he wouldn't wear his glasses, but saying that he will. Right. So to. what's the deal with this anyway? Right. So, well, we'll start off with one of the demos, which is called right. Face It Alone. Face It Alone. Right. Okay. Now, now uh, if anyone knows anything about that particular demo, yes, that was recorded. Um, I think it was recorded around the same time of Self Made Man. From that time. Yes, it was. And this was from the Innuendo sessions. Innuendo sessions, yeah. Right, Innuendo sessions. 
1991, pre-1990 in a way. <laughs> It's between 9 and 9. Yeah, because the talent was actually done for that anyway, which yeah. is interesting. If a moderator is in, uh, if, if um, I don't think a moderator is in today, I'm going to make, does anyone want to be a moderator for the chat today? Let me know. We'll just carry on with this. And so, so we'll let's face it alone. Okay. And we'll also put down, obviously, Self Made Man. And this came from the same, the same idea? Same era. Same time. Okay, exactly the same as before. So it's not it's not alphabetical order. Yeah. <laughs> I see. So alphabetical order. James says I wouldn't mind being operated tonight. I will make you moderator, mate, because we don't have anybody to moderate this chat. So you now moderator. You can be the moderator. Get things out there. Link it. Self made man, there we go. Right. Now according to this book. Well, we'll start with this one anyway. Yeah, According cool. to this book, it says it was at the 2000 fan club convention, Greg Brooks unveiled a slew of previously unreleased and unknown Queen tracks. Yes. Though he played tracks mainly from the Miracle Innuendo sessions, Brooks showed that the band had then been at a songwriting peak. Mm. A perfect example in is Self Made Man appearing in a demo from with Brian providing the lead vocals while Freddie sings a bridge, similar to Sour Waste's Sweet Sister. An exemplary track, the demo appears to be nearly complete and would have been an ideal inclusion on innuendo during sessions for what mm. the song was recorded and mm -hmm. had it been released. Mm -hmm. It would have been credited to Queen, though it's likely that the song was written by Brian. So, I so, mean, I've heard this track, and you've heard it. Right, yeah. Cause we, so, what yeah. is your feeling on this? I mean, this could have been a good well, track. I thought it would have been a solo song, to be honest, from Brian, for Brian to sing it. And I would have thought that it would have been easier to have it on his hook, on, on Battle on the Back of the Light. Of Light yeah. But, as everybody knows, Battle of the Light, it isn't, it is not an actual, it isn't an official album. It's actually an album of outtakes and re-recorded stuff from not previous yet, ones. Which, technically... And if they are going to bring out a box set, they shouldn't bring it out this time. They should actually do a new version of Brighton the Light, to be honest, because it shouldn't have been that way. Yeah, great. But saying that, it's a mess. That's why I always keep saying to you guys, don't buy Brighton the Light. It's, not the it's a bit of a mishmash, that sort it of is. That. It's a bit like a Made in Heaven type of album, in a way, because it's music that was recorded like until yeah. 1998, yeah. Made in Heaven. And, yeah. But if that song had been a Queen song, yes, it would have worked out well. If, if, if it had been a solo track, it might have worked well on Back the Light, or if it was shelved for later for later issues, I would say it would have to be on Another World. Yeah. I think if they'd done it as a Freddy, an own Freddy track, it mm. probably would have worked a little bit better. It would have. Had they not had Brian yes. do the part. Yes. So, the Self Made Man track, if you've all heard it, uh, David Alfred has got on his channel. You can go to davidalfred.com on his channel. Um, and there has been multiple remixes of it as well, but it hasn't been the best, the best recording ever I've heard because there's been tape versions, even the bootleg versions on the uh, the Hot Space demos and that takes one which we have. Um, I would have I would have thought that would have been brilliant to have it as a, as a main Queen um, track. Track, yeah, it would be. Freddie's vocals definitely on that one. It's quite it's strong vocals as well. It is, me. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's probably his best singing on that prior to the live take of Innuendo, which it was done live by the way in one take, um, which is also on which, which is on, with Queen Productions. With Queen, <laughs> Queen Productions. I'm sorry, I explained this last week on the show. Yeah, we don't like that guy who says them things. Yeah, <laughs> annoying, isn't it? It's annoying. And then we go so, to Let Me Live. Let Me Live. This is the one that. Now, I have obviously, that uh, yeah. originates from 1983. Yes. Now, I talked about this previous live streams that uh, it originally started off with Rod Stewart and Elton John and Freddie Mercury on it. Now, the only thing that exists on YouTube is a, is a five second version of it on, on as a, someone uploaded that. But actually, it's a really little rehearsal thing that's not actually been uploaded ever. I so, mean, the weirdest thing about Let Me Live is that it was actually. When it was actually recorded as a demo, they yep. class it as teeth, nose, and hair, mm -hmm. which was the group yes. that they were going to form. Which you can also find on the Queen, Queen um, Magic Works Years. Magic Years Volume Two, Three. I think Volume Three. three. Volume three. Oh, right. I think it's it Volume Three. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, but there, it was also titled as uh, "Take Another Little Piece of My Heart" as well. 
Yes, but they weren't allowed to use that because that was turned up on the same. Yeah, so there was copyright over that. So, and yeah, again, it's another good track, but we never heard that particular version. No, I think but the way saying for the saying that right for for, for the purposes, and I'll, and I'll put it in perspective for the purposes of of the Maiden Heaven album, I would have to say the Maiden Heaven album it would have worked well for the re-recording of it. But from my point of view, if they has not has put <coughs> If it was okay to shove up with vocals from Freddie Roberts recording in 1983, were they recording in 83 the vocals? No, they were recorded. Well, actually, between 93 and 94. Period, oh, was 93? Uh, well, no, 94. I mean, Tom of Freddie's vocals. Oh, Freddie's vocals. No, 83, yeah. 83, 83 was the original. So that's why I can Obviously, hear, not 93. That's why I can hear the, um, on the track that it's um, mostly. It's. Um, the track's mostly basically just, just being mished together. Because the reason that they've done it is they've took out, they've recorded it with vocals from Roger at his house in Allerton, at, at um, the Cosford Mill Studios. And then they had done it with, with Brian and guitar work oh, done at Allerton Hill Studios, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is that. But I, 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 yeah, again, the thing about that... <laughs> my suspicion, though, mm. I've got a suspicion about this particular track, because mm. the Let Me Live, like, part that Freddie does, obviously that's the 83 recording, and then the bit that Roger... Taylor does. I think that's covering Rod 96. Stewart's part. 96. I think that's Rod Stewart's part. I think that would have been Rod Stewart's vocal on that. Like he, he would have sung them lyrics. Yeah. yeah and then Brian yeah. would have sung. But saying that, that John's it does, lyrics. It does modify the fact that it does work for the the main ish. The main thing is it's just that as well. We're going to minimise the chat. So I don't want to spoil the chat for Mark, obviously. But we'll give you keep giving us a coincidence. I've minimised the chat, so we don't want to see it. But keep the questions coming in, guys. We've got loads of things to discuss about this. But that let me lift track. It should have been, it should not have been, and it, it really should have just been, I don't yeah. know, I'm kind of, I'm still kind of a bit mixed about it. And there's also a band version. Yeah, there is a band version yeah, as well. Which is, which, um, was, which, which has got the original vocal of yeah, um, a Little Peter with the, and But I don't know who actually played on the original track of this one. There's also Jeff Beck um, said um, in the actual book here. Yes. So Jeff Beck actually plays guitar. Okay, so that's Face It Alone. Face It Alone now? Yeah, Face It Alone, yeah. Now this is the, this the one that I, I really want to find out from this. There was like a lot of a lot of sessions at, at Innuendo that were trying to do it as quick as they can before Freddie only had enough to, strength to continue. Um, I mean, with, with, with what we trying to figure out now is Will these ever be out and released as as as, as the Freddie Mercury and the other about this new Freddie Mercury and 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 <coughs> David Bowie thing coming out this little box set thing they're bringing out with them and these demos and things? Yeah, well, there's there's about three or four tracks that they've done with them. Yeah, that have never been but released. they haven't touched them. They haven't, they haven't touched any of this. These at all. They've mm. only just gone back in to, to discover the outtakes of Under Pressure and the Matt Jackson demos as well with Victory, which they have found. Ooh, they found victory. It's very interesting. If, you have a, if you've heard the original version of Victory by Matt Jackson, I do recommend check it out. There is no vocals by Freddie on it though, but there is a version mm. kicking around which is legit. So face it alone was so face re it alone. recorded during it says during the Miracle and Innuendo sessions. Oh, so it's eighty nine between eighty nine and ninety nine, eh? Right. Okay. And return to the following year, face it alone was name checked by Greg Brooks at the two thousand fan club convention. Though if this track was played, it certainly ha hasn't been bootlegged. The other songs from the convention, including Superb Self-Made Man, which we already discussed, My Secret Fantasy and Robbery, have been released on a bootleg titled Committing, Committing Robbery. Right. Okay. Brooks stated that the song exceeds 10 minutes and is a three-part demo with Brian on guitar and Freddie on keyboards and multi-tracked vocals. As with most demos and unreleased tracks, when the full version was finally leaked onto the internet mm. in 2010, expectations for an epic Forgotten Queen classic were quickly dashed when Face It Alone was revealed as nothing more than Freddy D.D. Darding in his way around some mournful guitar modelling. Mm. It sounds to me Face It Alone could have been... So who wrote, like an who wrote it, by the way? Who wrote this, this, this song was actually wrote between Freddie and Brian. Oh, so it was a, oh, so it was a half collaboration with it. So mm. it was Fred and, and B. Right. 
Hmm, interesting, that. I would have been thinking the fact that my lost opportunity, obviously, when we'll get there later on, hmm. that would have not, I don't think that should have been a B side. No, so I, that, agree. I think Basic Launch should replace that one with this one. Yeah, or Self Made Man, even if they yeah. worked on that. Exactly. Maybe that would have worked. Right, I want to move on now to um, two songs uh, Silver Salmon and Robbery. Now, I really right. want to know what the deal is, why they never, ever issued this. Right, Silver Summer, we'll go to that one. <coughs> Which is also, oh god, that's harking back to what, 72, 73? Yeah, I, I put in 1970, 1969. Wow, even further. Wow. It might have been a bit later on in, in, in the next things, but on that take, on that Silver Summer, that song should have been on Queen 1. Or a B side. The only thing is, I don't like about that is the title. The title lets it down. It should be called Ride the Silver Salmon. But we're saying that, though, saying that, take, take this way, right? Silver Salmon and Ride the Wild Wind. So Ride the Wild Wind or Ride the Silver Salmon. Maybe them two things might have come together at the same prospect or time when mm. it was written. Yeah, you never know. What happened to in my face? Never know. Well, it says here, long rumoured not to exist, Silver Salmon is a raucous Black Sabbath style rocker originating from 1972. Oh, 72. Sessions for the debut album. Though some have right. argued that it's an outtake from News of the World. I don't I think it's an outtake. Be, it can't be. How can it, it sound? How can no. it sound very shitty when it's not? How can it sound like it's from 70, 77? It's not from 77. No. How, can, how, can bootleg tapes, how could bootleg tapes ever exist? Ever exist in that, that era? There is a new There's version. No way. There is a new version on uh, YouTube. Fully, without any. Like, yeah, I think that's the one from. Was it David L. Fuller? Yeah, I think so. It is David L. Fuller because he's back on mic apparently now. So it's got to be mm -hmm. activated. It says here the drums, including cymbals and Freddie's vocal strength, are the main arguing points. The song was apparently written by Tim Stafford, though. Queen gave it a different treatment that may have originally been intended with explosive drum feels and a crushing guitar riff. Freddie particularly screams the lyrics over the over the din, mm -hmm. though there mm -hmm. appear to be times when the band are unsure in which direction to take the song. Nevertheless, it's a curious recording, and for the casual fan, a revelation. Which I kind of agree. I think I'll, I think I agree with that actually because mm -hmm. the way that the way that that song structured stuff all I think that's probably. This would have been a smile kind of song. I think this came from the smile sessions from I'm this era. If, I'm wondering if Stafford done a version of it then. It's got to be a if version. Hunky Bong, if Hunky Bong did do it, then obviously they might have done it. But we'll have to look into that anyway. That would be That's interesting. interesting to me. Now, the next thing we need to talk about is Back to Storm. This is the 82-83 song, I think it is. Back to Storm. Yeah. Well, that was the working title of it, but uh, I don't know what it's originally called, <laughs> but it was... Uh, um, it was. Uh, I have. I have actually got a copy of that yeah, one yeah. by Quiet Truth on his with, with remixes, and the sound quality is fucking brilliant. It's actually around the kind of magic sessions. It says here initially known among collectors as Song Two, Back to Storm was report, reportedly recorded during the 1985 sessions for Kind of Magic. Uh -huh. Though there's still speculation that it may have been an idea recorded by Freddie during mm -hmm. his Mr. Bad Guy album. Well, Mr. Bad Guy was actually that was actually the same time that before Highlander. Well, not because that's another thing we need, we'll discuss later. Is that goddamn soundtrack? Anyway, now, moving on. And it says that, however, that it's most definitely Roger on drums with his distinctive hi hat touches, yeah. long established as his signature sound. Yeah. Thus, leading further weight to the kind of magic outtake theories. An instrumental solo version of the song has leaked out as a little boogie and contains some lively piano work from Freddie. Mm -hmm. Like most unfinished doodles, Back to Storm is interesting enough upon first listen, but there's not much else here to sustain repeated listens. You may have also realised it's a very that, short song anyway. This is the thing about that this is the thing about that song. It, it, it doesn't really make it easy to make it as a as a, as a basic mean song for the soundtrack obviously. But the um the song's really good. It's a shame I would have, I would have thought it would have been in the seventies and uh, the seventies sound feel. It says the eighties sound for it for that era is not what Queen was going for because they were going for more 
have electronic sound on it with Camera Magic and everything coming out and hmm. other songs that they were doing. It's more like synth, synth, synth in Yeah, the, it's very synth. synth yeah. There was that's exactly how when the Queen was projecting it in '84 with the Works album, Dad still think it's the best fucking heavy album ever made. There and um, the same, I absolutely love that sound quality. It's brilliant. Uh, right. There's also so here's like. so, sorry. We'll have to discuss Phil like as well. Yeah, well, I've got that on the on the bootleg thing as well, which I'll get in a minute actually. So one more, one more. I don't want to keep doing, going through all. We're going to be here like for hours and hours and hours. But there's a few ones I do want to talk about. So, uh, the one I want, uh, robbery. Um, robbery. That thing you done. I'll find my. Let me just try and find my. Yeah, I need my a very short demo as I well. Short. Yeah, this is where my vinyls come into play. So I keep you keep me cats. You keep me cats. Keep your chats coming in, guys. We will be getting your chat as soon as possible. More questions we have, the better chances that you guys can uh, contribute the Queen talk. Right, so moving yeah. on. Robbery. Robbery. So, um, yeah, it says here from the same batch of demos as Self Made Man and My Secret Fantasy, Robbery is a fast paced rocker similar to Headlong or The Hitman. I can hear the similar. Yes, I can. Too. Yeah. Um, and it's likely that due to such a com comparison, the song um, wasn't completed. The uh, lyrics are largely improvised and authorship claims for the song vary between mm -hmm. Roger and Brian. Yeah. So that would have been really good song. as being that kind of Hitman kind of idea, which I think the Hitman song is one of their best Heavis. ever rockiest songs with a weird time scale at the end of the song where kind of you never you know you can't stand the time scale at the end of it. It reminds me of the the time scale at the end reminds me a bit of Sweet Lady. Like Sweet Lady at the end of that. Yeah because I think that's how we work we work we work with the guitar parts in that sound to get that sort of like do 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 or Sweet Lady is fucking more yeah another heavy song because that's the walls time thing anyway from it gets confusing but it kind of works for it anyway. Yeah again this song is interesting though because mm. it's sort of like an early version of Hitman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. think that's where it's coming from. Yeah, it is. But maybe that might have been the, the main that it kind the of tension. had the tension that was going through that the Brian's mind was going right I'll just put this track this down but I don't want to just put your vocal but just sing anything spread and do that and then all of a sudden it becomes the same. The it's Hitman, amazing. Yeah. It's Hitman really came. clever. So the last one Obviously, from this album, which we do, both of us have this now, which is fucking awesome. Uh, it has got to be feel like, and this is the one that, that is coming out. As I understand, EMI is about to bring this out officially with a new remaster, not this piece of junk. Possibly with David Bowie doing a version. Of there is rumours going around, there it's is a lot of rock text from David's side, and he, um, he did put a lot of things in it and I'd love to hear the outtakes. I really would love to hear the outtakes a lot of this stuff because it's fucking brilliant. Of course there's cool cat as well with so, Gary on vocals. Uh, on ear, I talked about this before. You know you know how they recorded it on ear? Mm. With the microphone to a to a cassette tape and yeah. just got across the paper. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh that's a bit naughty. Oh, is it, do we just press it for this final release and do it that way? Okay. <laughs> so, I feel like this is the one that is absolutely, I think, oh, the sound quality, the, the, first of all, sound quality on this version is probably not good. It's actually decent. But saying that, though, for the friggin', for this thing, this was, I mean, they were only fooling around the studio, but damn fantastic. Great track. Fantastic. Like another it should have been. It should really, have been on Queen Forever. It should have been on Queen Forever as, as, a, as an outtake of it, and mm. that would have made Queen Forever better. But Queen Forever is just shite. Should have remade it and just Fantastic. updated it. A bit Fantastic. More. But we're saying that they have to try and find the vocal, vocal fader one mm. of it because there's a vocal fader wrong with it. So yeah, so, yeah. The, the information here. This song was what eventually grew into Under Pressure, as we know, when David Bowie showed up at a Queen recording session at Mountain Studios. The version with Bowie on piano has been leaked. Ah. 
to bootleggers and was played by Greg Brooks at a recent fan club convention. And it's not difficult to find the parallels between this song and Under Pressure. With its similar piano and guitar melodies, the pace is slower and Freddie's vocals are more reserved, mm -hmm. indicating that he was mostly improvising the words with some polishing and finalised set of lyrics. Feel like it would have been a worthy addition to Hot Space, but ultimately the uh, right decision was made yeah. with working on Under Pressure instead. There's a quote in this back, <coughs> which I think is bullshit for a start. <laughs> this early demo version of Under Pressure features the same backing guitar work by Brian. What the hell does that mean? I have no idea. But it's missing the famous bass line. Right. The bass line's kind of still there, but it's just... It's not even on there. It's... Well, you can hear it. It's very dim, though. Yeah. The lyrics are completely different and not and in no way resemble the final lyrics from Under Pressure. Whoever wrote this trash on this bag is totally wrong. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't a Queen fan. <laughs> They're the Queen fan. They are Queen fan. But that's a few little insights, guys, to what we're going to be doing for the next couple of months, couple of weeks on Queensville. Is we're going to be looking at some of the, some of the demos and stuff, and what you feel about it as well. Which now we're going to go to the chat room and find out what you guys think about that. Now this is a hell of a good chat. This, as I said, guys, we were keeping this really, really, really backed up for as much, much as we could, and as months came around, it's just been phenomenal. But okay, guys, you can still buy Alex's album. It's available for purchase right now, and I think. He will have a copy of it as well because it's pretty brilliant. Mm -hmm. And Devin is barking downstairs, and we're just ignoring her because she's just being a pain. Because she wants to think she wants to be upstairs, and that's not she's not being upstairs. Queries girls joined us. Hello, my friend from America. Uh, we're going to be uh, going back to the questions now, right? James says Battle of the Light would have been a great Queen album title if Freddie was treated with good medication to heal him from AIDS. Um, Do you agree with that? I don't know really because, I mean, first of all, I don't think Back to the Light was something Freddie wanted to do anyway. Because no. I mean, Driven by You, Freddie did actually. Um, yes, there is. There was a thing where Brian actually said to him, mm -hmm. "Do you want to sing this song, Driven by You?" Yeah. And Freddie was like, "No, you do it, my dear," and, mm -hmm. and left mm -hmm. it with mm -hmm. Brian to do it. Yeah. So I but don't which, think it was something he wanted was, to do. Which was for innuendo, but it was taken off innuendo. <laughs> So How weird would that have been? Had it, it been a if it had been a Queen song, it fucking would have worked better and take off stupid. Lee well, yeah. What's Probably the songs on fucking Lee Window now? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Um, um, well, hey, don't or... try so hard. Would have gone off, and that yeah. would have been replaced it better. <laughs> right, uh, the version "Let Me Live" with Rod Stewart would have made a good single track on one of the CD singles from the very song. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, of course, but it never happened because because EMI was being pricks at the time. Yeah, definitely. I totally agree with that. Because, yeah. I mean, it had Rod Stewart and Elton John have been on it. Also, it would have helped like yeah. get Queen back in the charts yeah. as well. it would have worked out better as well. Because... For, the, for the standards that we're making for it, it was about, oh, get it out mm. there. Um, they could have made some rare, kind of rarities yeah. album with that for Queen in the year, next year. Well, that's what we've been working on for many years now. But next year, we're definitely getting a confirmed thing from Queen online. I think Jackie is going to try and put a statement out to say that it will be out. Hello, Records at the minute. I don't know. Um, okay, so says, hello guys, hi, it's a sad day. Yeah, that was a sad day, isn't it? He <laughs> says, um, I've been nice to chat because we didn't want to spoil it for you guys. Who was the person in the stream? This is Mark. Mark is Mark Biden. This is my mate. We've been knowing each other for many years. This is where I used to go down to London sessions. If you go back to the videos on Queen, we did a massive exactly. video collection, but we're doing a new version of it, right, next year. We're going to be starting to do a brand new version of his Cold Queen collection in better HD <laughs> camera. Yeah, with updated records. Yeah, with well. updated records and everything. So there's a brand new video coming out that next year. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look. Quest Girl says it's so weird it would have been 27 years before Freddie died. I know. 30 years and three years. I know. I know. So Unbelievable. Sad. So sad. There, you know, he's behind us, you know. Yeah. There he is. Uh, we need a time machine for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. That actually, I will keep that one for next time. Definitely. Definitely, yes. Yes, try and stay the same age so we can go and see Queen Live. Yeah, I think that's the best idea. Was <laughs> right. Never we're actually, Park. We're actually going to see a tribute band. Mark's going to book the tickets to go and see a tribute band called Flash, which I have heard they are pretty good. Um, yeah. I've heard a couple of um, tracks of theirs. Uh, even that guy, that Gary, 
Mullen. Mullen. Yeah, Gary Mullen. I can't stand him. I can't oh, he's, him. he's not. He's not the best. He was good at he one time. But he was okay, but he's saying that he's like all us. He goes on the top of it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I miss Freddie. That's that was maybe sound crazy, but I'm honest. Well, that's American. You know, that's where it is anyway. Don't forget it by Alex's album. <laughs> uh, back the storm could have worked as a B side for Pain So Close to Pleasure are both Aretha Fruits Franklin type of songs. Pain So Close to Pleasure is not a Aretha Franklin type song. It's a Motown song from John Deacon because he wrote that. It's very Diana Ross sort of style. That song. Yeah, I, it sounds a bit but like he, chain, chain reaction style yeah. sort of thing. No? Yeah, they were going it's, for that sort of stuff. Sort not, of not the same sort style. of type as what the Bee Gees were doing with Diana Ross, I say at the time. Saying that though, in that era. He wanted to try just to do something that was working well for Freddie's part anyway to see what mm. it worked. There is a version of Play the Game with um, Barry Gibb or one of the Gibbs. Yes, Andy Gibb. there is. Andy Gibb. Which were... Which we we'll to talk about in the wasn't it? Was that in the States? No, yeah. they had Munich did it. We'll the States, they did it in the States first, but then they came over in Munich and they did their own version. We'll have to talk about that. We'll do right now. we leave that for the next one the screen. Let me do it. Mm. Uh, let's see. Busy, busy, busy. No, you know. Agree, the Hitman is one of their best rock songs. I absolutely have to say it's fucking brilliant that song. <laughs> it oh, should yeah. have. It's sh that's one of the best last ever singings done from uh, from Freddie, for without a doubt. The worst thing though, when it was released on the vinyl, the, the first edition of the vinyl, they edited it like fuck. It was awful. It was now awful. the double editions come out now. Which is it should have been. Times you know what? That innuendo original innuendo album. It should have been a double album. Should have been. But no, because EMI said it's too expensive. Uh, anyway, let's see. A uh, very underrated song as well. Yeah, it's good. At least with the B side of I'm Going to you Mad. It was. Queen Forever was the biggest scam of the Queen's fans ever. It was. Queen Forever was shit. The only decent track is, you know, Let Me In Your Heart Again. No? Yeah. The only, the only yeah. one that we actually yeah, got. That was well, look at the good. state of it, though. It's not even. It's not. To me. That song, I mean, fair enough, right? Well, when Brian was saying, because there's been loads of people commenting about this video since I posted it, saying that Brian is wrong. Um, when they did it, I really thought it was going to be like sound like an original track, but no. Brian decided to go and put the multi tracks in, and decided to take off all the parts because he didn't, they couldn't, because they realised it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't sound like it was well enough to bring it out. What did they do? Just put Freddie's walk on it and you guys just go and record the track in the, at the private studios. Is that what you do? Mm. What's the point of that? But he did say it was going to be like a Made in Heaven star sort of thing though, didn't he? He tried to... If, I mean, we all know it. We all definitely know it is actually um, Hammer the Fall. It's a rework of Hammer yeah, the Fall. Definitely. It's actually a pre-work of Hammer the Fall before it was done that way. But well, same with Keep Passing the Open Windows. If you listen to the bass line on Keep Passing you know the what? Open Windows, do you know what, it's the right? same as the kind do, of magic. Do, do, do you know what? Uh, of all the songs, right, that should have been on the friggin' hell and the soundtrack, that song. Now, I'll tell you why. No, I'll tell you why. If... I'll get, I'll get it again. I'll tell you something right. When I first heard that track... Where is my... Where's my... Works album? I hope it's the vinyl edition. When I... When I got this, when I bought this original version, right, of it, sound quality is fucking outstanding. You hear the the, the, eight, the 94 version, it's bloody shite. Yeah, great. The 2011 version is brilliant, but the reissue they brought of this now is the analogue version, the same one as this. This sound quality is best in the world. Keep passing up windows on here. It should have been on the freaking time of the soundtrack for, for a doubt. Baselines, should exactly the same as the kind of magic, though. It should have been. It should have been, I'm sorry to say, but because the Kind of Magic album, I've talked about this in previous streams, and I think it's a mess. It's an absolute mess. Mm. It's not even a friggin' soundtrack album. Yeah. It's not. It's a fucking it's a studio mishmash. album. It's, it's like a mishmash of Iron Eagle with One yeah, Vision. Why put, and then you've got Highlander. But that's the thing. Why the hell would you want to put One Vision on that CD release? When it's just when it's the edited version, the extended version is the full version of it. Then why bring that out a, 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 a previous year later, and then all of a sudden a year after that you bring out Highlander? But what do you do? You bring out just an album worth of recorded material, but nothing at all to do with the soundtrack. What's, what? That's not even a soundtrack album. No. It's just messed up. It's all it's just studio work. And we it's need like, one. We do need one. So this is what they were going to do last year. When Hollywood Records were going to release their own version of it with the Rias Richard soundtrack, brand new, and then they were going to bring it out and it was going to be fine. 
But all in all, what does that do? No. Um, we've abandoned the project now. And we're not gonna we're not even gonna continue. Hmm. Great. What are they gonna do with it? I think it's a stupid idea to just put it out. Like it's like an edited it's a bit like live magic in a way. See the thing it's is studio version. The thing about what I can't understand is when EMI did it that way in 86, and fair enough, the band had their own say first, because they always had the decisions. And what did they do? They decided to put on, right, just stuff that was not, that was going to be a hit, because EMI was thinking, well, you need, to, you guys are going to need hits now. But what did they do? Yeah, bring out One Vision first, edited version, then bring out a kind of magic, and they bring out, what else came out of it? Friends be friends. Why the hell is that on there? I have no idea. Yeah, I agree. So it's only just single hits, it's just, what? Totally and then the artwork decides to say, oh, no, we're not put Highlander. Oh, can't put Highlander on it. We're exporting it too much. <laughs> it's like, stupid idiots. But yeah. I hope next year that, because I know, I've, I've, have you heard there's a new Blu-ray version coming out? What, of Highlander? Yes. A new remastered version it. of the show. Because apparently they're putting parts back into the into this Blu-ray. Now, Chris has joined us, who's Metal One on One, who's Mr. Metal. That's him there. He's got a he's got the Blu-ray version. He's got the American version, like you know, the version that came out in America. Is that the, the one? The identical one. The, yeah, it's the identical. No, I, but it's the identical one from Uncle Bear and Cabay released it in America first. Then it brought it over here to the UK, but all it did was just like replicate a, a clone image of what that was anyway. Hmm. But there is rumors going around. There's a new version of Highland coming out, a two disc edition with the Queen videos, including the video of one hit, one one. One Year of Love, which has never been seen in the UK to this day. It's only available in the USA. Hmm. Um, but I would like to see that next year, and then we'll be coming out. But I know that for a fact, Hollywood Records or EMI would need to push the button now and say, get the Quentin Highlander sorted out. Michael Cayman's estate, I know Michael Cayman comes up with this anymore, but if they can get the rights to Michael Cayman's estate and put the links back into the track, and there you are, because one of he New York, New York. Well, not the Freddie version of it, but there's got to be a few other songs that, that they've probably done as well that I've probably never heard from. There's a lot of stuff the from the outtakes of that. They must have done loads. There's about um, there's a lot of stuff that that is still sitting there, but you might can't get control of it. Well, there's a demo called Love. Um, Let's make love, which is also yes. now uploaded on YouTube. Yes, and I've heard that. And I think that's from the Highlander sessions. It is. Yeah, it's really good. But that would have been in the film. Um, let's see. D D D Miss Mash Boom Da Da Roger. What do you what do you do? Ah, uh, well, let's see do Um, what do you think of the of the track Queen Talks? Well, uh, Queen Talks, yeah. the the final that thing. It's actually nah, it's a joke. It's know. a joke. It's got a bit. It's it looks like it was all right. Fair enough. Went with BBC One, Radio One, and did it with Mike Reed, and it's recorded. Uh, in Rush fact, there is a, there's an unedited version of this which is on better. YouTube, which is fantastic, and it's all it's got the ending of it as well, the uncut version at the end of it. Queen Talks is all right, but if you want to go and buy it for a hundred quid, download the thing off YouTube. <laughs> um, what Vision was probably just put on the album so they didn't need to record another song. Well, I, I do agree with that, but saying that EMI were just being idiots at the time. They should never just put it on. They should just put it off and put kind of magic. Straight to the soundtrack. What do you do? Uh, bonus tracks that were cut. Even do you know about the um on the kind of magic album, the CD version? You know that's cut. Oh, the, the extended oh, version is cut. Yeah, yeah, you can tell. I mean, Friends with Friends is cut, and a kind of magic. Uh huh. Uh, friends the extended version is full actually, but no, the it's kind, the kind of, of magic that's cut. Then. No, okay, kind of magic is it only, it only goes up to like the last the three, bit. Last three minutes of it. There's a base bit cut, that just in. basically cut it off. I don't understand why they've done that. Yes. No, because you know what it was. Think about it. Because they were um, they were kind of thinking, for the, just for the CD release, um, let's just put let, instead of just putting it on, we'll just we'll just uh, sort of give them a version that's going to be the um, that's going to be the a version that they never never heard, never heard before. Hmm. So there, that's why that's what they've done for that. You see, they've done it like. Took it up from the from single version, that then the half the version goes in it. And that's kind of thinking time issues. Yeah, probably. They've probably for the time issues of the scene, they don't want to make it overrunning it too much. That's why we've mm. done it for. Even with a forever outtake, which is Brian. 
playing that as a waste of time. Oh, I thought that was really useless, dark. useless. Yeah. They even put that on Queen Throne, didn't they? Damn. The oh, <laughs> God, why did they do that for? <laughs> why can't you just put the article of business on there with, with a phone call from Brian May on it? Oh. That would have been nice, yeah. That would have been nice to put on there. That's, that's a better piano outro, I think, personally. That was often in his own studio, custom mm. at, at Alton Hill. Um, let's have a look. Um, they should restore the Queen videos in HD quality. They are working on that next year. Uh, Reese Thomas is going to go back into the vaults for a new Blu ray version of Queen Greatest Hits 1 and 2. Uh, Greatest Hits 3, I have no idea what's happening with that yet. I don't think they want to delve into the um, that period because of Freddie's illness. I think that's why they avoided it for some reason. There's a lot of things that they don't want to bring out. I think, I think the kind of Reese, Reese and Simon had. Does they've got full control of the video, as you say. I mean, mm. Reese has got full control of it now. But he's got to realise that you've got to have three things that happen. Do you go with, do you continue with the 90s period? What do you do after that? And in fact, and that's, don't even get me started on Great Flicks 3. Huh. That thing should have been in the bin altogether. That's a waste of time. I was a bit time. shocked with that, though, when they actually released I'm Great still going over there. Three, somewhere. Because they no. didn't actually, they didn't add the uh, work list for the end of that. No. Is there copyright issues on that? It's, it's owned by, it's actually owned by the, the spirit owned by what the Disney company owns that. So it's copyright this, issues. This thing, this thing should be in the bin. This thing is trash. I did have that. It's <laughs> trash. I did have it. I so, um, I'm seriously, I don't watch this anymore. Do you, do, you, do you know about the um? Do you know about the the, the, the Paris version of the Trouble's Go On? Yeah, it's do you a know rehearsal. About it? It's a rehearsal. It's a rehearsal. They, they added. And you realise what? You, you, do, you, do you do you realise the green screen used in it as well? Mm. That it's not even on stage. I know. <laughs> it's actually clever. If you actually do watch that on YouTube, look at very carefully. It's a rehearsal with 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 um. Elton, Elton on stage. What they did was they just basically colour boxed it with a with a thing that the guys didn't even stand at, at this drum kit. So it's actually been very cleverly done that. And I remember seeing the making of it on YouTube many years ago. And the Doro guys had said because it was like a camera going straight into the, the room and they had this green thing effect on it and they were all going into this thing and showed it the short you behind the scenes of how it was. It was really clever, and I thought, ooh, that's how they did it. It was made around the same time they'd done the raw mix, wasn't it? It they'd was, done the aye, both it together, was sort of aye, thing. and the, uh, the raw mix is great. That's probably uh, nice. I think that's probably one of their most best reworks I've ever done. The the only thing about that, the, the one you played me, the 2000 remix of it, but was never, ever issued, the B-side oh, of it, the promo you version mean, yeah, you've got. The 12 -inch. That one is brilliant. Yeah. Why, they, why Queen has never published that? They need to get it out, that version. It's fantastic. Also on YouTube. It's actually it on is, YouTube. but it but it's on the vinyl copy is terrible though. It's a yeah, longer version. But this thing, if they are going to start it up next year, they want to seriously seriously get the Disney ver Disney version of these Thanks days of our lives. lives, the older version made in heaven, the one from oh what the hell is it? But no solo stuff, please. Yeah, the great pretend um, driven by you. Yeah. No solo stuff. That's pointless. That solo stuff. What's what's the point of putting driven? I don't understand. And there's even not even Roger Rod Taylor out songs in the world. What, why they weren't even issuing Roger Taylor songs? There was nothing on there anyway to pull it off. Foreign sand. What's all that about? <laughs> These. Now they could have done more work on that. I mean, the only thing that lets this down for me is just the silent material. They could have, I mean, when this came out, we didn't have songs like Scandal or anything no. like that on video. No. So why didn't they, and even The Winter's Tale, yeah. it's from Made in Heaven. Yeah. Why was that not issued on yeah. this? Yeah. No? That's why this this thing, yeah, this, this is a joke. This is, I have to say, every Queen fan's got this thing, just throw it in the bin. Get rid of it. It's not, not to be seen for anybody's eyes. Even that version of Just keep the videos hey, here's that one thing. aren't released. One thing, Highlander, uh, uh, Prince of the Universe on this. Great cut. laugh, great laugh with that thing. That's also Edited cut. the shit. Yeah, that's cut. Do you actually do you know on the on on the on the on the Greatest Fix Two? Hmm. Do you know about the um when they've used that footage? Which one? The Highlander, Highlander footage. footage yeah. It's not actually. It doesn't actually that that beginning clip. By the way, the way they've done it is clever. They 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 did it straight to the track. 
Hmm. But what they did was, when they put the beginning of it on, they used the, 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 the outtake <coughs> of the um, trailer. Mm -hmm. Use a trailer version of it to mix it in with the video. Oh, right, okay. That's not... That's why that was lost in the archives. That's why it's not on here. That's ah. what they used. You can see that you can see it says because you know the very beginning of the trailer when it says right. Animal comes out. Well, that's actually from the trailer version, and I think that's how that's the that's only way they could use it for the purposes of when they were using it for that thing. Even at the end, the Flash. This is interesting. The DVD version of Flash is taken from that box of flicks version without the credits on it, because of course this is a fatal straight away with it. Very clever, that. Very clever. But you're better so, off sticking with Greatest Video Hits too for the. Prince of Universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great Sticks 2 is one of the best. I, ones I, I would keep it, this video, I was. purely for the songs that ain't released on DVD yet. Mm -hmm. Like the Shama Skull one, Days release, of Our Lives. They de desperately need to carry out they, soon. They need to get some of the tracks that <laughs> aren't released on DVD. I don't understand why, why they will have to wait for ages for it. They say, oh, we've got to bring it out. You know, it's just, yeah. So, question. Uh, what else have we got? Um, what is your favourite Queen video? Mine is... Oh, start, I'll start with Mark's first because mine will take ages to fuck us all out. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, as in what? As in can I say every Queen video? <laughs> no, it's probably one. Um, James Scandal. James, it has to James, be James, Scandal. You have to give us more information about that. Scandal. So me, it has to be... And I'll be careful here. <laughs> no, it's actually Radio Gaga. Radio Gaga. It is one of the best phenomenal videos ever filmed. Mm. And one of the most brilliant films ever done. And Prince of the Universe was done in America, obviously, but because that was just fucking phenomenal. That's like, it's one, like, of, yeah, vast, one of yeah. Freddie's brilliant last ever moving on stage. Fabulous stuff. Yeah, brilliant. Um, have you got the, the. Did you get the box set of the um, Live Aid? The full complete Live Aid? I had it. Oh, you I had, had it. it? I had it. I ain't got no more. I had it. But. Um, you buy it. Ah, oh, don't know. There's no point when it's that's yeah. Again, that's another edited shit. DVD. Oh, it is edited. It's all yeah, the, all it's all edited. Have I cut out all the bits from BBC? <laughs> yeah, not all of it's there. Oh, the full performance of Dire Straits ain't on there. Yeah, because it begins. That's obviously when it comes and saying, "Live, we're gonna do And it just doesn't even say that. It's just like because Eagle Rock. Luckily part, enough, though, Eagle, the Queen Eagle part. Rock and Naff idiots, aren't they? Agreed. Yeah. Those two guys, Terry Shand and Jeff Keltman, I think they should be sacked. Luckily enough, the Queen part's all, all there, though. So that's the good thing about it. The Queen part's yeah. all there on the DVD. Queen! Yeah, that part's on the DVD. Not on the... But that blooming monthly all thing came up. Was dreadful, yeah. that was. But Marcus, uh, you, you, you managed to get the track down the American version of We Were Rocking. We Were Rocking. No, 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 I've got. No, I haven't got it. Still there. Yeah. Sitting there. Need to get. That I might version. have to give you. Uh, if I can get a a um, if I can probably do an ISO image of that, I could probably just burn it for you. Yeah, it's really good. It you. That's, that's, that's ten times better. Fantastic. Best. Ten times better than Montreal. That is the best DVD ever Montreal. I bought from America, and it's that it was only cost only cost them um, about twelve ninety nine. I think it was in H and V. But Chris Chris has got the um, he's got the version with the extras on it. But that's got extras on it as well. Chris, your queen looks pretty good. Uh, let's have a look. I like Breakthrough a lot. Breakthrough is really good. And, and yeah, as you said video. before, James was saying to me before, and he says, I, I don't like the fact that when he does it under the thing, he could have fallen off the roof. <laughs> well, he's, he was, you know what, for what he was doing at that time, he had the stamina to still do it. So technically, he was doing a good job of it. The idea with the train could be called the Remote Express. Brian, during the video shoot, not the tunnel, and they see we just have a lot of fun in there. Well, actually, if you hear on the video track, on the original video track of it, that, um, that the behind the scenes one with the comfy song, Brian, John Brian, it, J, Roger's playing dr drums real on there. Mm. It's very unusual how he was playing drums on there. He must have played drums live every video shoot they did anyway. With him. They must have went that, up and down that train line for about three or four times. Was um, the whole day because very, it, was a very, very complicated shoot that actually yeah, because the been. way it was done, it was. The Dora Brothers decided they wanted, well, it's Dora Brothers originally, but the guy who, Great Western Railway, the Great Western Railway. Neem Valley. Yes, that one. They, um, that's the idea that I think John had approached them a bit and said, we'd like to film, use this thing. So they closed the whole area off for over the, about the day and they were going to shoot it for a long, long trail. And actually, I think it's the first time the Dora Brothers used. Was it was it tracked by cars on the side? Of the, it was, wasn't it? It was yeah. tracked by cars on the side of the road. To go at them shots, though, were 
fuck, fuck, you're yeah, fucking fuck, fantastic. Yeah. That's one of the most brilliant things I've ever seen. If, 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 if there had been another video with Freddy involved, if Headlong had not been shot in that tiny little studio, it would have been better if they did it as a performance. But, you know, c'est la vie. The director really does help, has had an accident before the video was done. Yes, you can tell in the video. Yes, yes, he did. He did. I think it was his leg. He uh, fell when he was up on the, the riser on the train. His leg caught the side of the rail. Guy had been bloody wheelchair. And that's why he's not interviewed on the actual official video of that. He had, he, had to, he had to persuade the band to do it, and he said he had a scar under his lip from a car accident. Yep. Well, it's sad, but there's like nothing about it. You do, you, you do know that. Do you, you know on um, Days of Our Lives, I was to have got off um, Gaming Head, which is not here today because it's actually busy. Days of our lives. This over here I've got. Mm -hmm. I've actually, he gave me a Blu ray version of it, right? And I've, I've ripped the Blu ray now on DVD. Right. I've got the extras on it. Fucking, fucking fantastic. Did you know that, you, you do know that um, 1981, I mean, I've discussed this before. But you know the picture where they're sitting on the um, the picture, black and white picture with them the last the last days before he died. Oh, are you talking about on the days, veranda? These are days on the veranda. Days of on the veranda. Video, yeah. Yeah. You do know that that um that was when Freddie was in a wheelchair at that yeah, time. Yeah, you can tell he, that because he is. But that's not him on the wheelchair because he had to be he had to be lifted out of the wheelchair to sit on the veranda with the house, um, and then it had to be taken to. Take the yeah. as well. Because he, he could barely walk doing the that. Poor video. man. Barely walk. Very sad. If he had have been given the drugs and the proper treatment, he would have still been here. And would have still been making history. Yeah. And there was no need. I have to agree with something though on that on that thing. There was no need to have the sun portray him that way. It should never have been done that way. No. I'm taking Game of Heads place tonight. I know you are. Because you're here. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Uh, have we got any more questions, guys? Because we're normally here for an hour and a half. This is what we planned this afternoon. We're talking about being streaming for. We'll be streaming for about 52 minutes. That's pretty One good. thing I want to discuss, actually, mm -hmm. is that on Made in Heaven, I don't know if you guys out there know about this, um, there's the extra track, the untitled track. Now, we, you, I think you actually came with me about this information. I right? did. When you actually put the CD in, it mm -hmm. comes up dead. Yes. As the last track. Yeah. That and came. This was on the 2011 edition. So this is the 2011 it? version. Yeah, they. Uh, I don't know whose idea it was to do that, and I have no idea why it's been done that way. I don't know if that's a fault from Discogs, because you know when they submit the the track original lesson. track, no, when they submit the original mix of it, obviously, mm -hmm. it has to go through Discogs, and Discogs have it on there as well. They've confirmed it as well from it. And they've also realised that that's the, the situation that they've done it. Technically, the reason they've done that, I think it's from EMI's stupid marketing crap going on. Mm. I think they've, the reason they've done that is because it's kind of saying that it's rest in peace. Really? Well, why couldn't they just put that on instead? Yeah, but that, put that because I know why they were putting that on. Because it was going to be too mournful for the guys to go. Mm, do that for myself. Mm, shit as well. Gaming heads here. Hello, my man. Where have you been? Questions? You missed all the questions tonight. This is this is a guy <laughs> called Gaming Head, and it's a guy called Jan. Now, um, he added you on Facebook a few months ago. The Gaming Head is one of the best subscribers ever on this channel. He is full of Queen stuff to the brim. He's got over nearly every single concert. Mm. He's got Earl's Court. He's got Japan. And right now, he's getting the best thing. He's trying to track down the Wardour release of Nebworth. Mm. Yes. And it's on his to that is definitely what he's getting very soon. How about the Japanese version of Fred and Tribute Concert? Japanese version of the Tribute Concert. Guess what I've got from him? He has got me the Blu-ray version of it, but the uncut Japanese version of it from Japan. Mm. And I'm getting that of him, but I have to get a Blu-ray player, <laughs> which I'm getting a Blu-ray player next fortnight. I'm getting that replaced with a Blu-ray drive. Definitely get one, and I can't wait to see it. Yeah, it's one of them. That version concepts. that you gave me is just not working anymore. It's, it's such a great, great trip. The, the BBC one 
is all right, but it's not complete. But I do love the Japanese original broadcast. Yeah, you need that one. But you need it because you can. Well, you need it well, as actually, well. You got, are you getting the Blu-ray player? Eventually, yeah. Right. When, when you get yeah. a Blu-ray player, when you get sorted out, mm. I'll I'll have to I'll have to um, get you a burner, uh, a burner mm. for it and or a Blu-ray player. Tesco's but the BBC Tesco. version that I gave you was the full version. Oh yeah. But the second disc is good, but I want to see the first disc again. <laughs> if I, if even if I just get the first disc of of Gaming Head or, or whenever he decides to bring it to me, can't wait to see it. The BBC version still one of the best. Brilliant. Well, I like I like listening to the um, to the the broadcast. Uh, I've actually still got the broadcast version. Uh, the I, I downloaded the version of a torrent. Quite a while back. What a radio broadcast. I did. The, yeah. the Which BBC is also on YouTube broadcast. Now. The BBC full broadcast. Yep, that's all on YouTube now. Wow. Wow. It's brilliant. Wow. All on You can also YouTube. hear yeah, all of you can also hear all of the um all of the uh, rehearsal before um even I've also noticed in that there's one slight error What's that's that? been cut from the from the from the only from that official rubbish D V D that came out. Do you know that um, in the start of um, at the, at the as a at the beginning of As Per Labras Dear More, mm -hmm. do you know that Brian's guitar? Yeah, it goes, it, it, no, it goes out of tune. No, no, I, I, but yeah. Brian, but Brian and Roger are out of time mm -hmm. on that song. You know that? Yeah. I uh, and also I love that. A, a <laughs> string breaks during Hands Full, but you don't actually realise yeah. that on the official yeah. release. Yeah, yeah. But they should. The, but um, if there were, but they should never re-released it on bloody. Three DVD set. It's not complete. No, we should have just trashed that in the bin. And just really get the original. Them. Why can't they just afford to buy the rights to the original broadcast from Sayo TV? Put it on the friggin' DVD release and just put that on. Oh no! Oh oh no! We can't put that on. No, we're not, we're not. Remember what they did with that stupid damn um, Penguin game Rhapsody? Mm -hmm. We're not allowed to show the credits at the beginning uh -huh. of the film. We've got to take it off. We've got to have to rework it and put our own version of it on. Terrible. That's Gary Teller's fault, that is. It's fucking awesome. Yeah, again, that's cut as well, though, isn't it? Hungarian Raps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, another one bites the dust. Gary oh. Taylor, my ass. <laughs> yeah. There's a new guy apparently on YouTube. Someone's telling me about this new guy. Who was the guy who was telling me last week about this guy who was making Queen videos and he was having a rant about um, uh, the Hot Space album? He says, apparently, right, he complained. He says, I'm not a big fan of Love's Flowers and Mort. It's boring. How can you say that? He's That's not that. a Queen fan. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm very glad you watched his video because I was I was really pissed off with it. He's a dick. He's from London. He's from your end. Well, I weren't born there though. I was born <laughs> up here. I thought you were born here. <laughs> Let I me know. get away with that. I, 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 I. <laughs> no, anyway, that's fine. Um, right. While we're for more questions, guys, let me tell you about what is happening for the next couple of weeks. I'm going to show. I'm going to show you these anyway. This is uh, Alex's new album. This is. Very nice. One of the most amazing guys. He's heard Mabbis days, haven't you? I have. Very, very <laughs> much. Fucking. And Andy did a great. We had to bring it out. Nice artwork. Bring it out. I designed nice. that. Very nice. Designed that, and I took the picture myself as well. And that's actually her sitting on the rock as well. Actually, got to get a copy of it. That's a copy of Secret Voice from Jay. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That song Burn has been a popular song on YouTube. Is this like a double L? It, no, no, it's the way we did it. Oh, right, okay. It's like, like a vinyl. It's clever. Thing, yeah. it's clever, isn't it? And this is her new one, Copic Songbook. Uh, this just came out last week. Okay, nice. Uh, it's very gothic. Very mm. dark. So you, you guys can uh, still buy these online on the U. On Discourse.com, uh, not on my page because I'm not allowed to put links in there anymore because of the DWP. Oh, God. <laughs> and you know it's about that DWP shit as well. But they should never have done that to me. Wankies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Say we want, mate. It's my fucking spin. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Darren Locke. That's his name. Darren Locke. Oh, oh. don't even go there. He knows him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, I it's, can't say it's, that. Prick. It's, it's, I can't something, say something, it's okay. <laughs> Keep your voice down. It's something that him and him do not get along. 
No, I just don't, don't like. I, it's not that I don't get along with him. I don't know him, but it's just when he talks about talks Queen stuff. Absolute bullshit. He doesn't know. He doesn't know what he's saying. He, he knows more about Pink Floyd than he does Queen. <laughs> he seriously doesn't know what he's saying. So as I understand, he's yeah, a Pink Floyd. He's more of a Pink Floyd fan because he likes Sid Barrett. Yeah. He's more of a Pink Floyd fan because he likes Roger Waters. You know. Mm. Don't get me wrong. I love Pink Floyd. He loves Pink Floyd. Everybody complained about Endless River. And I'll tell you why. And mm. this is where I have a funny feeling about that album. Right. I do like um, Loudon Woods. The rest of the album, I, I, I'm, I'm lost with it. It's, it's, it's a good song. It's a good album. But you've got to realise, they're saying it's more... I mean, when you look on Wikipedia as well, why are we even talking about Pink Floyd? Wiggy, <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, you why I brought Pink Floyd up. Um, it's because I this watched is a Queen Day. I know it is. I know the reason I brought Pink Floyd up was because um, when Brian and and that, that version with Brian and Bowie and um, and Brian Bowie and he did a rework of a Pink Floyd Pink Floyd song. Brian Bowie and Brian Bowie and fucking David Gilmore. David Gilmore. And they did a they did a um, Rebel Rebel. All right. Yeah, they were really, really. Oh, they did Arlen Lane or something before it. Anyway, mm. but um, yeah. But now you're gonna talk about Pink Floyd. <laughs> nah. Here I talk about Pink. Um, mm. so here's a question I want to ask you because this is something I've asked all my Queen fans. What would you like to see come out next year? Well, it's fourth anniversary of the Live Killers period. So mm. yeah, Live Killers box set maybe. Mm. Maybe I mean the thing is about the Life Killers album, as it is, it's down here, actually. is that this particular album, we don't know where it's recorded because it's like a live magic. It's all done in Paris. It's all. I done don't in... think it is. Well, I think it's, according I think it's to what three different places. According to what some people have told me, they think actually it's all recorded in Paris. And I think no, because you listen to the Love of My Life, and then you see the video for Love of My Life, the live version, and it's this Japan. album needs to come out again. On a new edition, I do. I mean, I don't know the new original sound quality on this is, is really good, but technically, I think it's time they should really brought this out again for a new remaster. They didn't issue it on 2011 because they already did it prior to the release in 2006. Don't which matter, was, they should which still sound release quality it, is, but well, the way it's format doesn't work. I'm sorry to say, I think they should still re release it. Why don't we release this again? Get it out again. This why the haven't why, why I'm putting the box set, you haven't put it in the box set. Nice box set version with all of videos know. and every, like live yeah. versions of, so, on DVD. There's a question for you guys. Where was this recorded at? I think most of it was still in Paris, but most of it's done somewhere else. Well, the love of my life is definitely Japan because it's on the Great Flicks one yep. video. Yeah, it is. So that's definitely Japan. Well, it's all over the all over the continent anyway. Mm. But probably um probably um Discogs might have some information about it. Um any thoughts about something with Freddy as a 24th of November? Oh, that's a really good question. That, that's really good, James. Very, very good. Um, if he was here. Ooh, that's a really good question, that. Well, um, he would have, would he would have liked the... What? How old would it have been now? About 70-something, wouldn't it? 70. Well, he's there now. Look at him now. He'd be honest on the wall. 76, maybe? I, I'm trying mm. to work out. He's born 46, so... He's born 46. So about 72. Yeah. yeah. About 72 it would have been. The man would not have changed. Look at Brian. Mm. Jeez. He's not changed a long bit. In. <laughs> look at the old interviews. Apart from the grey hair. If you look at the interviews from 80... No. 91 to now... Looks exactly the same. Body's mm. the same. Hair's the same. Well, yeah, but kind of. The man that hasn't changed. The one that played him He's in the film. He's still. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. He's still brilliant, Mike. He really needs to sort out his, his solo album next year. Is it Quinlan Lee that played him in the film? Yeah. Yeah, wow. What a, and the movie, by what the way. Amazing. I, I want to say something about the movie. I've talked about the movie many times. I think both of us agree that the movie was fucking fantastic. Yeah, that live aid the, part. I haven't got the soundtrack yet. Now, I'll tell you why I haven't got it. 
and you guys probably might agree with me on this as well. I didn't get it because one, Mott Martel was on it, two, Parts of Freddy was on it, and three, Rami was on it as well. Now, but was on the album. Yeah. There's no no according, the according to to the bullshit that I've read on fucking wiki. I wish it was but because it would have made it more interesting. Here's something really interesting that got me. When I watched it, I thought it was going to be an album I was going to be really disappointed with. But the, the, the movie itself, I wasn't. When I was hearing the tracks, though, I thought some of it was kind of just like... Some of it was redone. And some of it, like the smile thing, obviously. You can definitely tell that they've used Mark Martell for that hmm. version. And yeah, I right. think Tim Staffel has also been credited as special thanks as well to use the track. Because it's actually his team, it's actually he who owns the rights to the song. But I think Queen's bought the rights back to it now. Yeah. But um, but I was really pissed off with the fact that Roger and Brian were not producing the film. They only produced the music. They were on the set, but they weren't producing the film. They didn't have no say on the film itself. Did you look at the credits in the very beginning of the film? Because they the music producers. Yeah, but it doesn't indicate exactly what it is. Did you, here's the thing. Did you spot the mistake they did in the credits? What's that? Go on. What's that? Dexter Fletcher was not credited as director. Was he not? No. <laughs> they credited the whole film as Brian Singer directing it. Ooh. Did a mistake. Because he said, it says, associate producer, director, no, associate producer, Dexter Fletcher. So does that tell me they were putting his stamp on it to get the full approval before even Dexter took over. Mm. That's what I've got from the film about that. Credits are wrong. When the DVD really pushes, if there's a, there's a five hour cut coming out of it, there's a fact, five yeah. hour cut of the film, I can't wait yeah. to see that. On the Blu ray version, it's going to be fantastic. There's going to be a vinyl edition, there's a double album. That comes out in March. In February. And the reason to bring it out in March, the double it's, edition. It said actually February, actually. It's February, February March time. Yeah. But the reason bringing it out that time is because everybody wanted to buy the CD version and the download of it and get all the promotion material out of the way. The marketing box, I think the marketing box was just totally too much. Mm. The marketing was... I mean, fair enough. The cup, the cup was fine to buy. I got that for nothing. You got the cup? It's up there. That okay. was only available at... Uh, that was only... I'll just show you guys on the camera. Yeah, that was only available at certain, certain cinemas. And that was free. Nothing to pay for that. Right. All you pay for was your drink. Your drink. I've got the poster. And that's so. it. <laughs> oh, I'm getting a, I'm getting that off uh, gaming head by the way. Getting the poster. It's only really a small one though. It's not the big one. <laughs> I would have loved to have the stand though. In the cinema, right? If you're getting the cinema, they had the big stand about this big. It was a giant stand. I could have took that home with me. <laughs> I thought, oh, that'd be nice. Oh, yeah. Be nice. Oh, we have. Right. Oh, now we have some presents now. What he's brought me now. So let's see what we have. We have got, from Deb and Russell, <laughs> <laughs> we have got Seven Seas of Rye, the first, the second single of it, with Back With the Sea, What a Food I've Been. You haven't got that one, have you? I love it. No, I haven't got it. Now, yeah. this, I, I, I love I love Devin at the finals, with the press and everything. This is 1974. This is Trident, obviously. If you can tell. And this is EMI. Oh, apparently they've used a different colour number on this one now. Now, it's not as what I thought it was. They've used EMI 2121A-3U, and this has not been pressed by anybody. No indications who pressed it. Interesting. Mmm. So that's a rarity. The condition is all that. My record player is not working at the minute because it's broken. Because it, my, uh, my, Iowa, my Iowa needs to be repaired. Oh, I will get a new okay. thing. It's like a holy grail. It says today, isn't it? Last Palabras de all, Favourite song ever. Favourite song. Bad Bye Cool Cat. Which I, I think Cool That might... Is that the version... The standard version of it? Yeah. Standard version of Cool Cat. Which is really good. What would they play on that? It's got... Um, oh, there you go. It's got some great looks in the back of there. This is, um, this is a very bizarre present. This is one of the cream ones again. This is EMI 5316. This is uh, this is interesting. It's an international number. 
And apparently what they've done on here is they've engraved it. You can see from the light. Mm. Engraved it there, but look at it. It seems to have actually continued with the... Look, actually, look, looks like we've got to put Queen on there. But they've, they've stamped it as EMI. So you see like it's stamped you see like it's stamped oh no it's stamped on it. But yeah. it's obviously got A one one one. They were using the new catalog number there at the time when it was mm. done. This was published by Nick W. Nick Nick Z. Good engineer. Cool cat is the same number, five three one six. No indication you produce you published that part as well from it. Uh, but it's a set standard version as before. Which is really bizarre. I love that song of bits. Next one There's is two versions of play the game. Now two versions, two versions of play the game. Oh, remember these things, of course. Yeah, and there's a there's Freddie Mercury uh, looking like he has been uh, in the sun too long <laughs> on it. This is a bit damaged. This one. I've got two versions of this one now. I've got oh, now this is interesting. Now we oh, this is really weird. This is really weird. It's an original EMI label with the original Queen logo on it. Now, why they use this for? That's bizarre, that. I've never seen this before. You would have thought they would have put on the, the Queen, the, yeah. the, 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 the game yeah. white label on it. But why do they use that for? That's one. And then the other one. I'm not sure if that's the same label or not. And this, this one here is a jukebox version. Well, actually, it's not. It's the same. Probably the same thing as before. So let's check these out and see what numbers are on it here. So we've got like two versions of this. This one is Nick W. And it's 3518-1A. B side of human body, which you all know the B I'll take from it. And it is the same thing. This one, 5076. This is the same number, isn't it? 5076. And Nick W again. And then B side is the same as that. So identically both same versions. Uh, just one that hasn't got a one's called crowd, one that hasn't. But it's a shame about the sleeve. Yeah, I think it's attached. Yeah. And if you all know about the, this this shoot by the way, this this, this shot here. Uh, this was taken identically here. With it all four of them on the veranda, and then it was just done that way for them. Yeah, basically they took the process of. That's why you can the tell that these, the, these pictures are supposed to go together, right? <laughs> and they were, all what they do is to do like, they just like, they like, supposed to go da 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 da. So they four of them standing mm -hmm. there, and it's like, wow. Mm -hmm. But saying that, that's Munich for you. Yep, I know that. And the next one we have. I got a picture of this, which I know you have. I do have this. But you could put that in a frame. Yes, I will clean it up actually. My version is absolutely scratch the hell actually, it's been good. This is no one but you. I have this one already. No more to say about it. I'll probably put it in the frame actually. I use it as, as, as a live. clock. And let me live, which is the one that you, um, which the girlfriend fucking uh, destroyed. This is the um, one of the last. Th that, uh, this is this is interesting. This picture here. Was taken in 1986. This picture here was taken in 1986. This picture here, I have no idea when that was taken. I think about 88. 88. Same so new Freddy. ones and old ones. New versus old. Interesting, isn't it? <coughs> Freddy's one's 88 yeah. as well. Um, doesn't actually indicate what the hell's on it. There's um, Fat Button Girls Bicycle Race. Oh, yeah, well, oh yeah, that's right. So it's like 33 RPM as well. And uh, Sound Court is supposed to be pretty good in this as well. Good. So that the Kevin McCarthy who did these ones, fantastic. Thank you, well. Thank you for them, mate. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. Very nice and great. Maybe you'll have to put some lovely, the lovely things. I will. Um, I will put probably put. I will probably later in next next year. I will do a, a vinyl overview of my vinyl collection. But we are going to do his vinyl collection next year better because I'm getting a laptop, I'm going to get my, once to get that laptop sorted out under there, which is a mess in it. That's cool. Right, so they'll go to in there for now. Uh, so we have got more questions. Oh, this is what I love about this. Jade's joined us as well. Hey, Jade. Hello. Jade's the <coughs> singer you've just seen on a, on, a, on a CD cover. He's going to buy one of your albums, Jade, by the way. You love, you love your album. So, <laughs> anyway. Um, okay. It's like a holy grail. It's just called Queen. That's where it is. It's 
right? Right, let's have a, let's go about the chat. Put that one in an anti-static plastic sleeve test. I don't have one. Um, I don't have any. Luckily, the original is still there. As I like the synth version too. It's nice to have them. The 2012 version works well for some songs. For example, how can I go on? Oh, but Barcelona is still better than the original version. I do agree, actually. Mm -hmm. I do agree. I have listened to the 2012 version of Barcelona. It sounds more dynamic and more real. The that's the strings one. It's fabulous. I love it. I love it a lot. Um, James says the usually original Queen logo on the label for the album, the game as well. Did that? Well, I know. <laughs> no, I don't, don't think so. Great single cover. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I think. Um, oh, James says 1991. That was taken. John's picture was perfect. That's what I just said. Mm. Phase one was taken during the Barcelona time, 1988. Yes, it was. Which, you know, the two versions of Barcelona, the white version and the reissue. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So not the you know two about the, as well. You know that you know that um, EMI couldn't sign them on the day on the deal because um, Montserrat was signed to Polydor, mm. and then he couldn't have the Great Pretender couldn't be issued because they had to be careful it wasn't a Freddie Mercury solo album mm -hmm. and it was a Monster Cabai duet album to have classical music on there so it's bet actually never did that should never done it they should have basically have um had it had it with EMI would have bought the rights back to it and done it that way but no mm. they didn't did they and what did they do Universal fucks about with it <laughs> In the thinking, thinking the first, the first version of, um, in fact, I think Gaming had said this to me. If I'm right, is it right? Gaming had said this to me. He's bought the first edition of of, of Boston Robin, the rare one, the cream right. version, mm -hmm. the embossed one, beautiful. The reissue one, I think, is just it's exactly the same, but all they did was just change the cover for the front. Are you talking about the 2012 one? No, 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 I'm talking about the 1988 original. Oh, right, okay, yeah. The first pressing that came on the, it's not the UK, hang on, hold on, you're going too fast for me. Um, so the, the Queen version was the first version that came out in 1988, then it was reissued in 1992, tried two years later to, to, to Freddie's death, mm. to Freddie's memorial death, when the sales it was re released for it, in the glossy version. But I don't like that reissue. It's the sounds terrible in it. I should the original version is better because it sounds better. Uh, but when you I bought the rights back yeah. but when you I bought the rights back in nineteen two thousand for the box set, which is up there, which is what you you haven't got yet. <laughs> I still prefer the still original eighty eight version over the two thousand twelve. The nineteen eighty two well. American remaster on that is the is is well impressed with it. Well impressed. But to me it's they need the original version of it. Well, they couldn't. as Hollywood Records owns the records. Um, let's see. The, if one, uh, they used the original Queen logo on the German version of the game. Yeah, I think I that's think probably be right. Yeah. Then. So why did they issue it in the UK for that then? Bizarre. Really that's what we'll talk about next time. Queen's one. They use the right. So it's not. It's not on the UK one of the label. Oh, you mean the white one? Is the white one you're talking about? Or the, or the, the, the thing? I, I'm, I'm confused. There's a, there's a guy on here, right? He, he comes on here all the time. And he talks about... He talks things... Planet Mixer. If Planet Mixer was here today, he would be having a ball. Planet Mixer is one of the most b bizarre guys I've ever met. He could, he, he'd say something like... He'd say something like... Um, uh, I can't remember what he said. In the last chat on Tuesday. Scary oh, points. Hilarious. Scary Gary, points. So. He does sometimes <laughs> when he's uh, when he's when he's when he's around. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Bryan is a good guy actually. He's really good. He hasn't been on a hit queen for a while. Jade's just resting in bed today because she's mm. just wanting a rest because she hasn't been out of bed all day, <laughs> which is very unusual. Nah. The queen oh, the night. queen logo on the white label of the album of the game. Right. Is is what is what <laughs> the Queen logo on the white label of the game album on the American one I've got. Whatever. He's a lovely man. He's a lovely man. What do you mean? I don't. I don't know what you're on about. 
talk English. He's, this he's, is getting weird. He's that, he, he's getting, that I'm getting... Uh, that's James. James. <laughs> yeah. He's actually from your part of the world. He's actually from the North East. Oh, is he? He's from... Um, where are you from again, James? Tell me where you're from again. You're from, like, you're from, you're from Darlington or somewhere, anyway. Um, he's anyway. Man. What do you think about... No, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait. Peter Straker. Ah. Ah. Dynamic guy. Dynamic guy. Next year, his arms get reissued at last. Oh, yeah. Fucking belt time as well. James is from Germany. Is he? I thought it was a young one. Right, he's from Yorkshire. That's where he's from. Yorkshire? Yeah. James is from Yorkshire. Where is there? Yeah, he's from Yorkshire. That's where, um, I think he's from. No, I have oh, moved. Yeah. How can you have moved? <laughs> Where's he moved? He says, I don't know. He's from Germany now. Well, yeah, I thought you were in York. Oh, Plant Mix is from up, your, up our way. So Plant Mix is from there. He's from Germany. There's two of them from like the same areas. Because uh, Gaming Head's from the, from the, from the, from the, uh, from the west, I think. And I think James is from the north. I know, I know you're joking. I know you are. I understand. <laughs> He's you a understand. lovely man. But yeah. But yeah, uh, Peter Strake is going to be on tour next year, um, and he's uh, going to be back doing his Braille thing. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see the interview with him? What's that? With Peter Freestone and with Matt Ryan. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you've seen it. Mm. Yeah, enough of them. Have you seen the? No, no, no. I'm going to ask you. I want to ask you. I want to ask you something. Did you just see the part where, where he was singing, If You Go Away? If You Go Away? Did you see the part mm. where he was singing? Very you interesting. tell it was fucking for him, wasn't it? Mm. <sighs> I could just watch that again. I How about the... I um, love that. Go on, have go you on, seen mate. the interview with... Um, oh, what's his name? The one who done the Time Musical with Freddie. There's a full version yes, of it now. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, well, uh, this is the thing. Yeah, there's a 17 minute video of it now. Uh, I don't know where they got it from. That's, that's bizarre. That. Mm. I don't know if they got it from um, Dave, Dave Clark's estate. Here's version, something. Yeah. Here's something that you might not know about. You know, after the here's something for you guys as well. You know when um, after the after Dead Rise was released mm -hmm. a year later than that. You know that Dave Clark went back in to do a Dave Clark Five album, the the I saw the Gold Hits. Oh, did that? Yeah, that was for Freddie. That you know. What was it? it? Was dedicated to his life. Mm. Now with all those songs that he loved them in the sixties, that's when it was reissued that way. The oh, last track. That. If anybody's heard that last track, come on, uh, get together, track. You have to get that album. It's brilliant. It's in every one of us. Surely that must have been recorded no. officially no. as well. There's got to be a mm -hmm. proper version. Of yeah, there is now. With Cliff yeah, and is, Fred is, yeah. It's available on that. Uh, it's on the thing. The the Time album. You've got a Time album. Yeah, I've got them. Oh, oh, God. I really need to get that Time album. It's brilliant. Um, but I need to get. Uh, but seriously, um, track down Dave Clark Five. So I go the hits. That's dedicated to Freddie Mercury. That whole album. Mm. I never knew. I, I never knew the compilation was for him, because I've, I'm finally feeling the the track order that he's put in there. The there was something on that album that I didn't realise that that was for him. Mm. It was freaking brilliant. And that's the, that's pure brilliant music you ever hear, especially Dalla Love. Wow. Should we have a ten minute break? Um, I, I'm just gonna go and get some juice because I'm not yeah, I'm really yeah. fine. Do you want I some need, juice? I need a drink. Yeah, we need a drink. <laughs> we'll go and get some juice, guys. Keep your chats coming in. I'll be back um, in yeah, two seconds. Well. Oh, well, if you're doing that, then well, why don't we let the streams over? Because we're going to be finishing like, in about 15 minutes. 15 That's minutes. That's all we're going to have. Okay. You know, 15 minutes, and then I'll get this sorted out, and then I'll... Um, thing. I don't know where my things... Oh, here it is. Yeah. I'll just give it... I'll put yours in Jade's cup. You like it strong. Please tell me you like it strong. I do like it strong. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I need the toilet around as well. Two minutes. We'll wait about you guys in a few minutes. We'll go. On.
that's cool. Right. Okay. All right, guys. So uh, we are right, we are nearly coming to the end of our Queen's Hill special today. Mark will be back with us, fish on Queensville next Saturday with another Queensville. Told me to. Let me have a look at the chat. Hope you guys have really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed it today. I read out. I'm glad we had somebody in here today. Is Jade still here? I wonder if Jade's still here. Jade, did I hear? No. Um, I'm going to um, I'm going to Jade's tomorrow to do some recording with it tomorrow. Hopefully in the new studio, which is good. But we'll see. Um, oh yeah, you, yes, gaming head, you were about uh, saying about the um, um, uh, what I can what, what what I can promise you for this year is an official official Blu-ray and two posters for Christmas. Nice one, mate. He's going to send the Blu-rays mm. that time anyway for me. Yes. We're all having juice now because we need it and stuff. Uh, Cheers. Did you watch the video I sent you some hours ago? Mm. Oh, the teaser video you sent me Is on this? Gaming Head. Alright. You sent me a teaser video. Well, watch that after this, actually. Um, I'll put it on. Put that guy who, who did say Prior Queen Productions in it in Incubator. <laughs> That would be nice. That's great books actually doing it for the Green Productions. Yeah. Seriously, that thing needs to die altogether. Uh, the Queen can... <laughs> In the, the the um if you remember <laughs> me and Mark oh this is embarrassing this before Mark just managed to get moved back to Newcastle because that's right from Newcastle. Yeah. I remember that idiot at a Queen convention in Newcastle, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awful. I can't even remember his name now. <laughs> Jim, his name. Jim Sloan or something, yeah, or Sloan. whatever his name is. Anyway, well, we're not going there. No. Don't go. If anybody's from Newcastle, by the way, don't go to the Queen convention next year in Newcastle because it's a piece of shit. There's one in February which is going to be better, though. Yes, the one we're going to be seeing. Flash. Mm. Mm. I think it's a pretty cheap one. Mm. No, that's all right. That's all right. We were going to go and see the White Snake thing this year, but we couldn't go. Just it's can't. a tribute band. We can't it? go anyway. It's a Bon Jovi. Uh, bon Jovi, White, White, White Snake, Snake tribute band. Oh, we'll see it. You and Guns and Roses. But we can't go. Mm. But we're going to something new next year. Me and Mark, because Mark now lives. He's living here permanently now, by the way, in Newcastle. He's only like an hour away from me, which is even. We have, to, say, meet up. We have to meet up so in the middle, good. though, Tess. Hey, what? Have to meet up in the oh, middle. Oh yes, no. Yeah, well, we're here now. You go one so way, way I go the other. This isn't split screen, by the way. This is live. <laughs> you go one way, I go the other. <laughs> you just live, you live Newcastle. I live here. <laughs> I live we're in the, I live, the middle. I, we're all like we're all, we're all of us together, kind of kind of bond so well. <laughs> but we know each other for about nearly over over the past six years That's now. We really got on really well, so we we really know our stuff. I'll tolerate you. <laughs> nah. No, but it's nice to have somebody to do quiz on me. That least is brilliant now. But now, yes, he's going to be on board now for the next few months. Um, on the odd occasion. Although on the occasion, he's going to come up. <laughs> to, um, do the, to do this, he'll do, he'll do, um, he'll probably just come next week as well um, and do like just another one of these because I really like these things. Actually, it's good. If any of you guys have any questions about himself, you know, ask him because, as I said, this is what it's for, guys. This isn't just a channel that was put together. This is a channel that's basically for you guys, some about Queen, music, general chat, and everything else. We're back on Tuesday doing a general chat, guys, with myself because Martin will be here on Tuesday. Is you about to go and you're about to go yeah. to hospital, aren't you? No, um, I've got that, and then I've got going down to uh, London pick up my drums. He's got a gay drum set, by the way. Drum kit. When Thursday? Yeah, Thursday. Thursday, early start. That's cool. Great stream tonight, by the way. Thank you very much. Indeed. Good stream's always good every night. You see, it's good. Um, let's see. But I don't know if I can manage, manage it to do the Freddie Mercury tribute this year. Uh, it's a big file, that, mate. Just the other now, mate. And uh, I'll tell you what to do. Because there's a massive, massive gig file to send me. Why don't you... Um, why don't you do us a big favour? Be saving us time. Just do us part one of the tribute concert. Put it in the movie. Um, Cyberlink director. Edit it to part one. Because part two I've got anyway. Just send part one. Mm. 
And then both of us will have the copy of it anyway. And that's it. And you'll have it on this DVD drive. Great concept. Just cut that down and just put it as a cut it down to like a four gig file. Or compress it to a four gig file or whatever. I know I mean you're you're absolutely fantastic when you sent me that that blue Blu-ray release of it. Fantastic. I was just really nice and quality. Um so are you guys got any more oh he's from Berlin. Gaming heads from Berlin. That's where he's from. Berlin. So Mark Mike 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 who who's just kind of getting back to normal. Um because I'm like my well you taught him anyway. But oh, yeah, I don't Mike, Mike, talk to him. Oh, Mike, he's right. Yeah, he's Mike okay. But Mike who used to join our streams before he was on um, Skype. I don't Skype with him. I don't use Skype anymore. <laughs> to be honest, it's a pain he has to use. <laughs> well I've only recently used it again because of Mike, right mate. It's all right. No. I'll only, I'll only use it on my, my phone if, if it's necessary, but I don't. I'm not hardly ever use it. Mm. We use Team Viewer instead for business like the music thing I'm doing as well. And also, Mark's heard all the tracks as well from what we uploaded the past couple of weeks ago, and I, and he's really impressed with what we've done. I mean, my mistake has been. So is Mike actually? Mike, yeah, actually my, 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 my 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 actually as well. My, 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 all the music I'm doing, he says, is really good. The worst part of the concert was the part that came after the credits. I know, because it wasn't complete. Lovely the way it was filmed, the Live Aid concert at the end of the movie, though. Brilliant. Love the way it was filmed. Yeah, the, the Live Aid thing, this is the thing I didn't like about that. Just the just CGI was fake. It was just the way it did it. the concert was fake. The mm. other thing was just fake. Yeah, we know that. But when you see the making of it on the making rough rough cut, mm. you see that there's only like a few people who were actually standing Sad on man. that RA, RAF field, mm. and it was very very clever. But I thought I don't know, fucking ruin it. And I went, why are why are they putting CGI in that? And I was really pissed off, and I went, you're not even replicating the thing. And I went, you wasted the movie. I love the way it was filmed, though. Still like the way it was Mike filmed. Myers played a good part, though. Mm, yeah, but I, I still think he should have got a bigger role than just that part. Yeah, he deserved a bigger role. But saying that, they'll have, they'll have to disguise him for oh, yeah, the Sheffield well. brothers, obviously, because mm. I was playing Norman Sheffield, and that was his the original guys at the Trident, and the Trident got sued, and. Um, it's actually interesting about reading about Trident Studios. You know, especially if, when it, when the Chevy Brothers lost out in um, 1980, hmm. it was taken over by um, by a guy called Jeff Jeff um, Jeff Weston. Do you know Jeff Weston? He's, he went record check, record check records was based in London, at Berwick Street, and they had a, um, they they bought the rights to the studio with Ian Levine and Frank Trench. If I'm not one of the songwriters, and I've I've recorded a song called. Turn back and walking away with Alex. Hmm. Fuck yeah. The, the guitar on that is brilliant. But those two guys got a thousand pounds to start the business with Jeff to get the investment from that to actually go to Trident. And they purchased the Trident studio. Oh, right. They purchased the whole lot. Hmm. And then both studios moved to as well. It's a very interesting story about Ian Levine, actually. If you've never heard of him, brilliant songwriter, brilliant producer, amazing guy. Uh, that he we're, we're still fine by the way we haven't got sued for that song <laughs> we won't be uploading that either um, let's see I have I, I actually I only have the official official release which is which isn't uncut the other one which I want to burn on Blu-ray is still downloading that's very much with constant I'm going to say that Spiral Tap and a little part of Extreme is missing in the first part of the tribute concert that is the is what? is it? Oh, this is the Blu-ray version you've just done. It's not the complete you one. You want the unofficial one. Sorry, mate. Uh, can I just say something? I, um... <sighs> Damn it. It's the... I know he's downloaded. He's downloaded the Blu-ray version that's come out of the three discs. That one. Yeah. That's, a, that's the uncut one. That hasn't got... That's not the complete version I want. I, I said... Um, to try and get the BBC version or the Japanese version of it, but um, I've, I've already got it. I don't have that. I I don't have the Spinal Tap anymore, and I don't have the Extreme word, More Than Words thing with. And you too. Thing. And you too. <coughs> and Mango Grief. 
Wrangle Groove. Shit. That's what you've downloaded. Damn. Uh, gaming Head. I'm, I don't think I'm... I don't think I will... I, I'll tell you what, then, Gaming Head. This is what this is what we'll do. Scrap that. Oh, no, 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 no. The complete version with Spinal Tap is, is, is downloading. Oh, okay. Got you. He, he is getting the full version of it. Right. He's right, he is getting the full version of it. Sorry. Oh, but you but you but you waiting to get the extras but but right, got you. Got you. With you now. Right. We are about to finish the stream very soon, guys. We've got another fifteen minutes and then we will be going somewhere. I don't know where we're going. Get the questions in. I'm not getting any more questions, guys, because we'd love to have more questions, please. How many people are watching today? Four people are watching, that's all there was. Not very very busy. Oh, because the football's on. Ah, that's why uh, all the people in the UK watch the football. They go and have a kiss. And everybody comes on after the, after the stream is over, seven o'clock, and they all think, "Shit, I missed it again." And, and that's exactly <laughs> what I get every time it comes up. It's good. What I will do, I'll go to the comments page and do the comments page while we are waiting for more questions, and I'll do this now. And where is my thing? Here we are. Comments page. I haven't done the comments page for quite a while, so we're going to see the comments. This is the comments. This is what I like. I like to read. I love to read these because all I do is they just really, really get my 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 questions in and I get on my nerves. <laughs> but they're good for you guys anyway. It's a good laugh. So the first one we have is uh, Brast Tax. What's this? What I can't stand is how many fucking times you keep bringing up how music is all wanting. Oh, that's sort of do with Might and Magic 8. I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to talk about it. Reg of the Hipsters. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, that was all night on Tuesday. <laughs> the, what the fuck? The, the Mayor Monstrum. New subscriber. Thank you. Nothing to do with the original Operation Truno format. No wonder why is it not on Fem Academy. Fem Academy is no longer on now. It's Fem Academy used to be a big show in 2002 where you had singers and songwriters going into the house in Highgate Hampstead Heath. Right. Yeah, and it I was a big, huge mansion house. You were telling me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's not happening anymore. Yeah, not happening. Now. Got one question from 12 hours ago. Strasbury says, This is the making of the miracle videos. Dressing up as a child, dressing, no, dressing the child up as an oftenly in fabry gay guy. The moustached outfit is brilliant artistry, especially since it's it, it 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 lets the Lord know who's in charge of here. Whoa! <laughs> Someone's getting really good, and and, and so on. The person on behalf of Queensville and every single commentator here allow me to articulate what we are all saying, in so far as it, as an aspect of production is concerned. Lord, stick your position on homosexuality up your divine deity. We'd rather have Freddie and that boy and at and Will. Do you know what? That is. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> that's just wow. It's the way that he's expressing it. Obviously, I think he's expressing it about the way that he's, wa he's watched the milk of video, the making of it. But he's saying to everybody else, "This is what we want to do." And fuck off and leave me alone. Hmm. That's true. Yeah. So Strasbury, um, subscribe, press the bell button. We got we got more things to talk about next time. We'll also get Mark back as well. Mm. In a month's time. <laughs> In a month's time. <laughs> yeah, we'll be, be shorter than that, mate. Nah, it's gonna be a month. Yeah, no, we'll be we'll, we'll be he'll be back. He'll be back. Um, <laughs> that, that means I've got to tolerate you more. <laughs> no, probably after Christmas actually. No, we'll we'll, we'll actually we'll, we'll um we'll get Mark in after Christmas now because I've got a lot on my plate as it is for and the next we'll the next three weeks. And, and then he's got more research to sort out in the month's time. And I even I'm going to try and pop over to his house anyway and do Queensville over his, which we're going to film live. In fact, we might do a live stream of it because I, and I told you on the phone obviously, if I'm editing the video, it's going to take nearly over two days. Yeah, and I, I know it tires me so much. So I thought, you know what, we'll do it live, because seriously, live is better, and you don't have to fuck about, and take, you can take breaks, you can watch the live stream, your heart's content. Eight hours worth of live stream for me, I don't fucking mind. Once I get my laptop sorted out, I will be sorted. Awesome. Mm. Right. 
Well, any more questions? I have more questions because I need to disappear now. No, well, we, need to, we, we need to disappear <laughs> anyway. Um, so, has Mark, has Mark any question regarding my collection? He hasn't seen it yet. Um, I have got a picture. I'll show him on Facebook after the stream is over. Uh, greetings to Mark from Marion. Marion? Who's Marion? Your ex girlfriend, is it? <laughs> very nice indeed. I just want to quickly say thank you very much to Mark for coming over because he wanted to do this for ages and it was <coughs> over it was planned for over about six or five months. But the timing had been a little bit short. And I had I didn't have the time to stream. You've been busy Mark's with Mark's been busy. I've been busy with productions at the minute and the music's been doing phenomenally well. He's been impressed with what, what I've done. He's getting his drum kit up here soon. Once that's up there, well, I think sorted. <laughs> after that, we'll be ready to record with him. Sorted. Because we might be getting him on some albums soon because we have got a little proposal to, to ask him later tonight and uh, our time later. Uh, I think James is not his real name. Well, what's his real name then? May not be him. <laughs> As Mark has been watching, obviously, which is one thing. That could be so who's Marion then? Who's Marion? <laughs> Yeah, that's the source could be my, my is next that from James? Tuesday. Uh, t yeah, Tuesday. I asked the question, who is Marion? <laughs> was James who the Green Butler? Oh anyway. Butler's his name. Butler. James Butler. Marion Butler. Marion Butler. Uh, James Butler. Well, I love you, Butler. Oh, no. I love you, Butler. <laughs> oh god, I want <laughs> you know what's so bizarre? I was saying this week on my drive I had loads of these movies and I asked I got on the bus as the whole movies. Oh, God, I can't yeah, stop watching them all the time. I love it. Yeah. Even if it gets me down, I have to watch the I have to watch the holiday one. Oh yeah. no, no, actually it's the Mutiny of the Bosses. No, no, the holiday one. Yeah, holiday of the Fabulous. Bosses. Yeah. I can't get over that. I, I laughed so much to it. Mm. And I'm sure that that film was just spot on. We're ready to go out and about. Sure. Out and about. Well, well, guys, this is a being a bit good. I can't. <coughs> Let me start out again. <laughs> Take two. Anyway, guys, that's been a good stream this afternoon. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm the cool stream's going to finish now. Do you still want greatest picks? One, Blu-ray, one to three. Ah, uh, tell you what. Send them. Give them the mark. Give them the mark. Is that flicks one or flicks two? No, he says greatest picks one, two, and three. Uh, I just need three. Number three, do it for Mark. If that's all right, if it's okay, <laughs> just make just make one greatest fix Blu-ray with all the videos, not the versions. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Disney. Well, this is what you should get for him: Disney version of Days of Our Lives. Days of Our Lives. Gold version. Wayne's of World version of Green Rhapsody. Oh, that was my plan. You do it for you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, tell me what you want then. Golf version of Innuendo as well. Golf version of Innuendo. Who are you writing this down? Golf version of Innuendo. There's well as Disney version. And somebody to love from S George Michael. Somebody to love from George Michael. And the Days of Our Lives with Days George of Our Michael. Lives with what? Liza Minnelli, uh, Lisa Stansfield. Days of Our Lives with Lisa Stansfield. The alternate thing. Fine version of innuendo, yes. Mm. There's another one as well, I can't think of. One Year of Love as well. I went heaven for everyone. The Queen and all the different versions were rocky with band five. No. <laughs> no. Not that piece of crap. <laughs> put that Leeds. down. Leeds. put that down. Leeds. <laughs> oh, I put it down because he'll, 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 he'll say it next month. He'll say, <laughs> God, if I was shite. <laughs> But there's no way they should have done that before. All right, guys, listen, I have to go because things, time's getting on. Thank you to Mark for coming up. Yep, nice really, really appreciate it. He's going to be back next next uh, next year now with our, with our Queen Collection. We're going to try and do a Queen Collection at his house next month. Before I leave, you on all the drill by now. I'll just quickly say, you know this thing's out now. Go on the Facebook pages. You know where I am. Look at the same, which... <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys on Tuesday for another Queen's so until then. Bye bye. Bye. That went very well. <laughs>